comes, here he comes, here he comes, here he comes. Turn him loose, turn him loose. You wanted a line, huh? We had one. <laughs> <laughs> You can't just manage deer. You can't just manage elk. You have to manage everything that's involved. It's got to be managed on biological information rather than emotional information. Uh, absolutely critical that we have hunting, that we have management of all the different species. Let the dogs loose! Let them loose! Dogs are the hunters. You guys ready to hunt? Find a cat. Pretty good impression, isn't it? He's just cruising this edge and then he drops. And we're melted here, so we could be a day behind. We're gonna have to see if we pick him up fresh. Hopefully, he'll cross this Luke. road. snowy up here. Snow's getting pretty deep even in the park. Yeah. Yeah, there's just the tops of the grass blown off, but that's it. Well, maybe the cat tracks are down they're below. Be low. Yeah, that's where we cut those over. Well, we went up there, made a big loop, a big loop, went clear up to that upper park. Below that 14,000 foot peak, we saw two cat tracks that are fairly recent, uh, but a little too old to run. One tom and one either small tom or a female. So we're going to uh, maybe come back if we get a skip of snow. At least now we have it run out, so it'll be a lot faster to run. And we've course tracked it with our tracks so now we've time stamped it and we can see if, if something comes across our tracks so the hunt continues we'll go check some other spots Females are three and a half inches. And when you go from outside toe to outside toe, if they're four inches or over, and see, he's four. He's like four and a quarter. Yep, four and a quarter. And then a female won't step from one pad to the next, but 12, and Tom's will be 14 to 18, and see, he's stepping about 15. Yeah. So it's a pretty nice Tom. He's been in and out of here. I bet he's within a couple hundred yards of us probably right now. Well, you kitty, kitty, kitty. You can't just manage deer. You can't just manage elk. You have to manage everything that's involved. Predators, everything, omnivores, carnivores. All of that is part of the system. Sometimes people forget there's a relationship between all of these things. If you eliminate one, eh, you, you're gonna have some problems with your balance. I had a bum knee, huh? Well, we found exactly what we hoped to find. A lion kill. We thought we'd find a deer. We end up finding an elk. As you can see, he had a bum knee, so 
probably couldn't run too good. And it, probably from fighting in the rut and that cat got him here. And that cat has been in and out of here for the last couple of days. So we scrubbed out his tracks. We're gonna come check in the morning. He's here somewhere. He's been coming in and out feeding on this thing for probably the better part of almost a week. So we'll come in the morning. Hopefully we can get him. It's a Tom, so that's, that's a good sign. six times looks like by those tracks but don't know if he came in last night doesn't look like he did I don't know maybe he heard us or smelled us knew we were here maybe he's not hungry again yet so I don't know I don't know if these guys are gonna turn loose on these tracks or not they're probably too old so Up. I haven't been hungry yet. They're sitting up on a cliff with the meat sweats. Yeah. Waiting it out. <laughs> <laughs> the elk meat sweats. If we dry up down here, we'll just gather back up and go back to the west. Don't you think? That's what I'm thinking. Knowing these cats, I'd think on a full belly they'd want to go lay up on like those little rocky ledges up in there. Obviously you don't manage anything in a vacuum. Probably the most important part of that is managing the habitat. So all of these things can coexist. And I think that's the key word is, is a coexistence. Should have had snow last Friday. Didn't get it, didn't happen. So we just waited, waited, and it's almost a week. We had to wait a week, and finally we got, got the break we needed. We got about four inches of snow up here, and uh, it just makes all the difference in the world cat hunting. I mean, you can, you can do it dry ground, but you're just kind of uh, searching for a needle in a haystack. But you get a little fresh snow like this, and you get a hot track, and it's, it's a, a lot better. It's a whole different hunt. So, so we, uh, we got a hot track up here, and we're gonna get parked up and call her the dogs and see what happens. Let's go see what we got here. Got a hot one, Johnny? Oh, the wind's been blowing. He said when he cut it in the road, he could see toes. You can see toes pretty good right here. Oh yeah. I mean, that can't be that old. No. It's, it's all snowing. Oh, I think it snowed till 4 a.m. Well, he said it was snowing on him when he was up here on this road. Yeah. So, I mean, it's less than two hours old. We're gonna find out. You ready? Yep. Come here. I got that one. Got him. Let's hold him by the collar. And I'll just feed those in once we get going. Let's just start these four and then we can dump the others, yeah? The thing that, that we have to think about as an agency, as hunters, which we are, you, you have to think about how uh, our numbers impact the other species. Lions are managed on a quota system. We don't just let it wide open and, and go back and kill as many lions as as are there or anything else, we have it on a quota system. And once that quota is filled, then that lion season stops in that specific unit. If the quota had been closed, that would have been it. 
There, there wouldn't have been any, any hunting for this lion. <laughs> Now the fun begins. <laughs> the real hunters are loose. We're saying trade on our switches. Oh, yeah. Sounds like we might have uh, something treed. Hopefully it's a dry cat. Oh, it's still running, man. Yeah. This is the closest one you got. Pepper right there, 278 yards. I got banjo at 221, but then I got piper at six tenths. That's where all my other are at six tenths. Back that way. Like up in there. Yeah. Oh, I see pepper right underneath the rim. <clears throat> Might have multiples? Maybe. That looks like where a cat would go. See, there's banjo right there above the rim. Well, they're definitely on something, aren't they? Oh yeah, they're trolling. Well, looks like uh, sounds like we got a cat treed. We got two dogs down the other way on an, either the same cat's tracks or a different one. So there might be two in here. So we're not sure. So we're gonna go down in there, get the old bow, and see what's down there. See what we got in the tree. <laughs> You never know. Could have a bobcat. False alarm, we uh, got down here and nothing in the tree. Might have been a, could have been a bobcat that got up there and hopped, 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 hopped and they're still still on the tree, I don't know. Probably definitely was a lion. I think the other two dogs are on the lion, so we're gonna grab these and try to get them down on the trail. With the other two to help them out down the canyon further, so. All the fun of lion hunting, you never know. You don't manage a population by taking just males. You have to work the female segment of that population in there as well. And we take all of that into account. Uh, one of the things that has to be done when a uh, when someone hunts a, a, a mountain lion, for instance, in Colorado, they have to take a test, an online test, to identify these animals, size, tracks, whether it's a male or a female, you can identify by by certain coloration on the on the belly and all of those kinds of things. We need with some snow. We got it. We got lucky. You know these things never work out as planned. There's always a few unknowns riding the roller coaster ups and downs. We had a dog split, got a false tree, four or six of them, and then two of them stayed on the track. So. So I paced no, have some older dogs in the bunch that know know what's so. going on, how to stay on a track. So that uh, those dogs, older age, got us a cat this time. So pays off. Let's go see what we got. This one, your young dog, Johnny. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go, uh, go check him out. Dogs did a good job.
want it to come out, don't you? Yeah. That's why I wanted a dog over here in yeah, case it's yeah. squirted out. Let me clean that snow out and maybe give it a place where it can get out of there. I don't have any trash left. It's all in my truck. stopping those dogs. I wouldn't crawl in the culvert with this thing. Yeah. That sounded like war in there. Yeah. Four dogs and a cat. Whew. Like, no wonder Johnny was on his toes. Huh? Yeah. After a week of hunting, we finally got blessed with some snow and cut a fresh track and took us uh, about all morning and uh, we finally got it. Always a little bit tricky getting a shot up in a tree with so many limbs and stuff. Finally, he uh, gave me a good shot and got him right right through the chest so in the heart and Wes had to climb the tree and pull him out so everybody's okay considering what could have happened in that culvert we got uh, got lucky on this one we got a dead cat this cat is not gonna hunt no more on here so we're just doing our conservation work here keeping everything in balance around here hey guys if you like educational adventure hunting videos just like this one be sure to check out the description in this video for more links to hunts just like this one battle scarred veteran. Oh yeah, he's got some. Some people think that it's, that we just go out and kill things, and, and that's not the case. Obviously, mountain lion meat is excellent table fare. I know that Mr. Eastman will take this and, and use it uh, wisely there, you know, backstrap and tenderloin and everything else. So that's, that's part of it. The hide, the head, those are all trophies, but the trophy in, in the sense of a three-dimensional memory. Same as a photograph. I can think of the day that it happened, who were you were with, and all of those things. People often think that it's trophy hunting. More than that, it's memory hunting. <laughs> Congratulations, <laughs> man. That's Thank fantastic. You. That's fantastic. On a scale of one to 10, how mean is Armageddon? Are you filming? Yep. I can't say. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shut, shut it off. <laughs>